Hey there, comic book fans. I'm back from the comic shop again this week, and it was a pretty big week for me. I got, what, five, six comics? I can't remember. Uh, but I'll show them to you all here and now. First, we'll show you the freebies. Look at that, a nice little invitation to the launch party for something. Earth's Mightiest Heroes, I don't know. I just, I'm just i just a sucker for these freebies, so I pick them up. Then we got uh, Comic Shop News Free Comic Book Day Special. Nice little Fred Hembeck cartoon on the front. I guess this is all uh, all the stuff that's coming out on Free Comic Book Day. The only thing I want on Free Comic Book Day is, uh, I don't know if it's in here, there's a special um, first issue reprint of Berlin Number 1. And I, I already have Berlin Number 1, but for some reason I still want it. Look, I st don't see it in here. We get Spider-Man stuff, we get Jack Kirby Fourth World, Tales from the Crypt... I was like, hey, you know, I, I, I don't know why I want the Berlin number one free comic book day special, but what the heck? Oh, looks an Akira free thing coming out. Uh, who knows what else they got here, but, uh, you know, May 2nd, free comic book day. I, what is that, Saturday? I might stop by my store and give it a look. We'll have to see. But until then, I'll read all about it. Our first comic of the week is Usagi Ujimbo. Issue 167, or issue 2 of 7, The Hidden. Stan Sakai, and our first... One thing we're going with, Usagi's going sort of with the murder mystery motif for this one. That's Inspector Ishido. And Usagi hanging out in this town that, um... I think with the Christians... This takes place in feudal Japan, and Christians have, are... are uh, are just kind of, I think they have priests over there trying to teach some of the Japanese to be Christians, and the Shogun doesn't like it. So the, the cult of Christians was being hunted down here, and one of them was just murdered, and Spectre and Shido is going to have to figure out who. I, you know, Usagi is a great book. As all you know, I've been buying this one for 30 years, so uh, it's just good stuff. If in, oh, there's a nice... nice this nice watercolor piece on the back there. So if you've never checked out Usagi before, they're printing it now in these um, series of mini-series, though they're keeping the Indicia number inside the same for us longtime fans. Volume 3, number 167, number 133 in a series. So that um, us longtime fans don't have to keep uh, putting the new series on our pull list. So I like that. Uh, uh, because it just shows up like it always does. If, if, if they actually change the number on the inside too, then I would have to change it with my comic shop. I have to remember every time a new series comes out, blah dee blah dee blah that's no fun. I'm glad they're keeping it the same. And Lazarus is back with issue number 27. Rucka, Lark, Arcus, and Boland. Uh, we've this has been on hiatus for about, I don't know, six months or so, and they gave us the Lazarus Plus 66 miniseries, which I enjoyed a whole lot. Different artists on each issue. Each issue was kind of a one-shot that um, introduced different people in the Lazarus world in different spots. Very good. Here they are looking for a dead person on the ocean. So I can't even remember where this left off except with a big fight. that had. Now they're looking for a missing prince who is lazarus's brother or something like that and uh, ghost critic just tweeted out today i don't have to look in the back here that as of september lazarus is going to a 60 page 64 page format what does it say here so to repeat issue 28 released in may as scheduled issue 29 will be our first quarterly volume which was 64 pages with issue 30 on the stands in December. That's kind of weird. I don't know. What, I just hope I, I'm not a fan of that um, uh, perfect bound, square bound, Dark Knight format. I prefer the saddle stitch staples because I find that square bound format uh, just doesn't open flat to read right like this does. So I'm a little annoyed if it's going to be that square-bound format, but we'll have to see because I really like Lazarus and I, I really like my comics. To to me, that like square-bound format is the worst of both worlds when it comes to trades and comic books, because you know trade paperbacks are fine, except sometimes they don't open up the same as a comic book and they therefore don't read quite as they should at, at times, and you know 
so like a 64 page one square bound just kind of makes me go eh, it dampens my love for lazarus a little but we'll have to see uh what the format is like first before i uh get to complain too much and next we have mage issue number eight there he is getting punched last issue just took a turn um for the dramatic where uh our hero, Kevin Matchstick's family, was captured by the evil villains. His uh, son and... Uh, did he have a daughter? Was his daughter... Ca son and daughter and wife were all captured by the evil people out to get him. And they left him with this... Uh, oh, there's his wife right there in the clutches of evil. So it's been... It's kind of been fun and games for the first seven issues until that happened. And now things are... Uh, for the next uh, seven, this ends with 15, so for the next, this plus the next seven issues, I'm guessing are going to be a little more, uh, the stakes are raised a bit more with his family in the balance, so uh, I enjoy Mage a whole lot. There we go. What have you done with my wife and daughter? Answer me. Maybe he found his son then. We'll get taken away on a bus full of evil gnomes. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy Mage very much. I've been enjoying it since the 80s. There he is fighting the giant thing with his magical sword, uh, his magical bat, Excalibur. Uh, third series, he's going to wrap everything up, and uh, can't wait to read it. And here we go with uh, issue number four of six of Empowered and Sister Spooky's High School Hell, Fear the Junk Food Elemental. This is the first Empowered I'm reading, and I'm reading it, of course, because Carla Speed McNeil is drawing it. Uh, I'm a very big fan of her artwork and her writing. As uh, anybody who watches my videos, I've mentioned many times. And this is, this is a fun story about uh, that Sister Spooky right there, and that's Empowered right there. And Sister Spooky is sent, to the, sent back to her high school, which is full of, full of all these uh, blonde girls who sold their soul to Satan to get to be pretty and blonde and have some sort of powers and now they're all out to kill sister spooky in this you know it's it's kind of uh, set up like a video game where um each issue is a level that they have to clear and expelled means that one of them died one, one, one of the uh high school girl blonde high school girls and um each each issue is a level they have to clear and they have to figure out some way to beat the villains. It's very, it's, it's very a video, very video game ish, but a lot of fun, a lot of comedy in it. Up oh, free comic book day ad on the back, and very enjoyable. I, like I said I like the artwork in it a lot. Oh, look at this. We get some layouts in the back. A writer or artist as accomplished as Carla certainly doesn't need comic page thumbnails like the ones above, but I produced them anyway because as visually oriented storytelling, all my scripts start out as scrolled roughs. Okay. I don't know how close uh, Carla followed these. I'll have to see. But uh, excellent book. A lot of fun. Check it out if you want something cool. And here we have issue number two of Encounter. Too hot to handle. Too cold to hold. Baltazar, Franco, and G. Russo. Just Chris G. Russo is an old buddy of mine, so I check out his stuff. He's doing the drawing on this, and I think all three of them are writing it. And I got the first issue, and I was going to put it on my pull list, but my shop's, my shop's automatic. Uh, they, they send me an email of stuff I can order, and I tried ordering it, but it didn't work, and then I forgot about it. For whatever reason, I clicked on the link to put it on my pull list, and it was like, that that comic is not available. I'm like, well, that's not good. But luckily, they had a shelf copy this week, so I picked up the shelf copy. It's a, a fun kid's book. Uh, Encounter is short for, he's an alien, so I guess it's short for Close Encounters. He's come to Earth. He's got a sidekick dog. He goes on adventures, that sort of thing. All ages book. Um... Clank, hmm, Louisiana. Clank, hmm, Florida. This guy really gets around. Shung, North Dakota. How the heck did you get this one? Shoof, Hawaii. Okay, see, that one makes sense. I have no idea what that joke is, but uh, we'll have to find out in context. I just had to read a little something for you. But anyway, encounter issue number two from Cub House Comics. And our final comic of the week. The Highest House, issue number three. Nice, pretty, decorative drawing. Um, who does this one? Mike Carey. 
Mike Carey, Peter Gross, Fabian Al Alquier. Okay. Very much enjoyed this. As you can see, this is magazine size. It's bigger than a comic book. Um, got a little spot varnish on the front. We can see if we get the gloss air. She is glossy and the rest is matte. I can't quite capture it. See, oh, see how the gloss goes right through her face, but not the rest of it. The little reflection. Oh, the butterflies got gloss too. Nice little specialty cover or big specialty cover. I've enjoyed the first two issues of this a whole lot. Um, Ghost Critic, I think it was, just was just watching his video. He likes this one too. And I think he said he thought it was going six issues. I hope it does. This originally published, I think they said in France in the graphic album format. But listen, I like this format because I like the way com I like the way single issues open up when I read them. I like the way they you know open up and sit flat and I can enjoy the artwork. And this is all about um, the highest house is this old house they live in where uh, and our main character, this kid right here, where is he? There he is jumping. He's a slave who was just brought to the highest house, which all the noble, which a bunch of nobles live in. But it's so it's such an old house that the, the original inhabitants uh, were like from an empire that's long gone. And these nobles now live there and there's hidden rooms in the uh, higher house. And this kid who just brought along turns out is some sort of blood relative to some old guy so some some old magic user trapped in the house is talking to our main character so that's what that's it. so we're gonna have to see what, is, what else got here? eight million ways to die john k snyder the third i haven't seen him in a while but anyway it's a good book it's like a fantasy story little sort of historical fiction fantasy story going on uh, i'm enjoying it thoroughly and uh, I can't wait to dig into this issue. Now we'll show you some of our background art, which is, I, I showed you these last week, just inked, and now they're colored. They got a little, uh, they're in a little sleeve too. I often put put my five by sevens on a little on a little sleeve just to protect them. And so, as a matter of fact, it was just like last year, I was like, why do I bother putting these in sleeves? And then I spilled ink all over the place, and the only thing that protected half my drawings was these little sleeves. I'm like, oh, cool, that's why I do it. Someday I'll famous just for being famous, but until then, I'll learn to tell jokes. I also threw in, a, these, these are my, my own strange, life is misery, chaos, and doom. So try to have fun at the party. Real life can torture you later. But I threw in a couple of uh, superhero ones I did. I don't know if I've shown these before. I may have. Ask me if I have lipstick in my shoe. And you get punched. Little uh, Batgirl, little Iron Man. I like drawing this. This is my favorite Iron Man armor to draw. This is the... Uh, stop trying to stick magnets on me. I wasn't wasn't funny the first time, and it's not funny now. This is the Steve Ditko redesign from way back when, where he had that V cut out in it. I, this is my favorite Iron Man armor to draw. I just like... I always love that V with the stripes up there, the... So that whenever I whenever I've been drawn an Iron Man head recently, it's been that one. No one can convince me existence is pointless. Not since I'm strong as Superman. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, but there you go. A little bit, a little look at some finished drawings. If you look back at my um, my video from last week, you can see these three before the color was added. So uh, now you've got closure. Have a good week out there.